I thought Zero was going to be better, guys. Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're exploring the fourth episode of the show, Power Rangers Zeo, as well as the 159th episode overall, titled Target Rangers. We start this episode in a junkyard where a gaggle of cogs are grabbing random items building something. They say that they're almost done. In space, Mondo says that a new monster named Silo is being built and Orbis is being worked on by cogs to be able to make things grow. And Clank tells him to just calm down and then he gets tossed out of the table too to get modifications. Which is like kind of disturbing to watch as a robot. It's like kind of uh, forced. Now we're in the study hall where Rocky and some random girl who 100% was in Edenite the last time we saw her are playing some terrible video game. And Rocky thinks that the game is perfect and he starts hitting on this girl and she's like, mm, no. She starts doing something on the computer to wipe the main hard drive, which sounds like she'd have nothing. And she explains that if you're asked a question in the game and you get it wrong, you're hit by the enemy. This is intercut with Rocky struggling to get words out so that he can ask this girl out to a dance. He then just falls backwards and hits the ground. Hmm. At the junkyard, Stone, Bulk, and Skull are there because there have apparently been break-ins there, and they're told to stay on guard for suspicious characters. Why does it matter if people are stealing junk? Stone leaves them and we see the thing that the cogs built. The girl is pissed because something with the game isn't working and she's going to go home to run some tests. And she gives the password to Rocky because she's putting a security code on it. And for the password, which she writes down, is literally just a single line before she gives it to Rocky for safekeeping. Can we also talk about how this girl is so easily late 20s, maybe early 30s? She leaves and Rocky is super flustered. Mondo sees what's going on and he plans to use their software program for his own machine and he's going to send down a fleet of cogs to get the password from Rocky. Rocky and Adam are walking through an alleyway and Rocky is explaining to Adam that he doesn't like this girl, listing all the reasons why, which Adam turns into a funny moment between the two, explaining that he's just on the side of true love. I love Adam. Then a cog steps out super slowly from a portal before more come flying in. Rocky and Adam jump over them and they do an extended version of the morphing motions, which is kind of cool. They fight the cogs, but then one of them grabs Rocky's backpack and Adam asks if he has any idea what they want with it. Rocky doesn't, but he does lament the fact that the password was inside, so apparently he didn't even read the password. Also, he refers to this girl as Jennifer, which is probably uh, the first time we've heard this girl's name in this entire episode. We see that Cog is at the study hall at Angel Grove High, and it's here that I realize that this is just Miss Appleby's old classroom redone. Man, this show. Cog takes the password out of Rocky's backpack typing mook into the uh, keyboard. I mean, Rocky couldn't just remember that. This grants access to the cog who inserts a floppy disk into the computer and downloads the software. That software must be the size of a text document. Then he teleports to the junkyard, inserting the floppy disk into the monster they built and it comes to life and he backflips away. Of course, Bulk and Skull are walking around talking about how easy this is when Silo comes to life and they start screaming running away. Also, Silo is asking them questions because of course, in the power chamber, Billy explains that they've just finished the new battle helmets for the Zeo Megazord, which is unique headdresses for the Megazord to give different powers. Billy then says it's a shame that they didn't have something like this when he was a ranger. And then there's a really cute moment where Alpha says that it's a shame that he had to scrap by with bows and arrows. To be fair, Kimberly had to. The alarms start going off and they see on the viewing globe that Silo is attacking Angel Grove. At the youth center, Tommy, Tanya, and Kat are training and then Adam and Rocky come in, explaining what happened with the cogs in the alley. Then their communicators go off and they're updated by Zoran about the new monster. It's Morphin' Time! The rangers run into the scene and there's definitely bikes behind them. Anyways, Mondo introduces them to Silo, compliments of Zero Ranger 3. They take out their laser pistols, firing at him, and Silo asks them a question, but they don't even answer and he just decides to keep walking toward them. Then Clank and Orbis show up and Clank tosses Orbis around and around and away he goes, latching onto Silo and growing him giant. The rangers are left without any other options other than calling out their Zeozords, which come running out as they teleport in. They then all add their Zeonizer crystals forming the Zeo Megazord. I'm not gonna lie guys, this is really drawn out. Then the Megazord and Silo fight, but the rangers are losing pretty easily, getting pushed back and shot at by missiles. Then Silo asks, how hot is the sun? And the rangers are confused. And Mondo tells Silo to tell them, and Silo says, you're about to find out, <laughs> wrapping chains around the Zeo Megazord. Then Silo starts to freaking take off with the Megazord towed behind it, leading toward the freaking sun. What the hell? <laughs> the Rangers are struggling, but their heat shields are still holding, 
and then they get cut loose, forcing them to fall into the sun, and the Rangers are obviously panicking a little bit. This is when they finally decide it's, eh, we should probably call for help. Billy says that they have to use the Zeo battle helmets, and of course, these things are untested as well. I mean, they have no choice. He explains to the Rangers that the green helmet is for the Zeo gravity power, yellow is Zeo rocket power, pink is the Zeo cannon power, and blue is the Zeo pyramid power, and red is for the Zeo warrior mode, which is what they're in now. Adam tries the gravity power, switching to the front of the closet of a cockpit, and it somehow breaks the chains around the Megazord. I'm confused as to what that had to do with gravity. Then Tanya uses rocket power to propel them backwards from the sun, firing them away. The Zeo Megazord comes flying in out of nowhere just as Mondo is congratulating Silo, and they have brought the fight back to Earth. Kat then used cannon power, just firing at Silo like her normal Zord would. I mean, cool, Kat. Then Rocky uses pyramid power, and this makes... Silo float around. I'm pretty sure this was the one that was supposed to be gravity power. Whatever, Tommy's back in control of the warrior mode, using the saber to destroy Silo completely. I mean, did they just blow up that floppy disk? Of course, Mondo vows revenge, leaving with Clank and Orbis, while Billy and Alpha celebrate in the power chamber. In the study hall, Rocky shows up to find Jennifer, who's panicking because their software is gone. And Rocky tells her how it got stolen and whatnot, but he got the floppy disk back from a junkyard. Jennifer takes it, loading up the game, and once again, Rocky asks her out to dance, and Jennifer blames him for losing the password to begin with. Rocky then demands to know why she's such a bitch all the time, and Jennifer says that there's a lot of pressure that's riding on her right now with this project because the college that she wants to go to is watching her very closely. So this project could mean a scholarship if she gets good grades. Then she says that they should be friends at least, but then she brings up the dance, letting Rocky know that she actually really is busy on Friday, but she'll take a rain check. The end? Over the credits, we get bloopers from the episode. This episode is, uh, I mean, I guess fine. I don't know what to feel about what they're doing with Rocky, though. Let's break it down like this. Since Rocky has shown up in season two, he's been a cardboard cutout of a character. Now they're making him the goofy guy, which honestly works for him, especially since they were starting to plant these little seeds in late season three. However, he keeps asking this girl out to a dance when she clearly doesn't want to go to throughout the entire episode until she finally just stops being a bitch for no reason at all at the end. I really don't know what was the point of all this. It's a lesson to keep asking until you get what you want or to realize that sometimes people suck because there's other stuff going on in their lives. Like, what is the moral here? Also, can we talk about how hardcore it was that the Rangers almost got tossed into the damn sun? That was kind of insane, even by Power Ranger standards. So overall, this is a weird episode and I keep getting the feeling that's just how Zeo is going to be overall. Really different and weird from the show that we've seen previously without being so different that it doesn't feel like Power Rangers, but like, it's kind of toeing that line. So how will next episode fare? Find out next time, but until then, may the power protect you.